Hi, my name is Rob Tobolowski. I'm a third year grad student at the University of California, Los Angeles. In this video, I'm going to show you how I synthesize cyclononaline, starting from the dibromocyclopropane derived from cycloctene. Now, if you haven't taken any organic chemistry, I'm going to warn you that this video uh, may confuse you. There'll be some terminology you don't understand. I, I think I've already used a lot of terminology that you probably don't understand. But for those of you who do uh, practice organic chemistry, let me just walk you through the scattable mechanism that's shown on the bottom of the slide. Uh, essentially what happens is in the first step of the mechanism, lithium halogen exchange with one of the bromides on the dibromocyclopropane to form an anion. The anion then undergoes alpha elimination to form the carbene, which fragments in a radical type mechanism to form cyclononaline in this case. So this is a key example of the scattable rearrangement and its power in organic synthesis. Hello, today we're going to be doing a scattable rearrangement. Uh, as I just showed you, the um, reagents required are this uh, dibromocyclopropane derived from cyclooctene, and we're going to be treating that with methyl lithium to initiate the scattable rearrangement, and the product will be cyclononaamine. So, let's get to work. So, right in here, I have my uh, dibromocyclopropane compound, and what I'm going to do is wash that into my uh, reaction flask. I have here a dried um, round bottom flask equipped with a stir bar, and I pre-charged it with 20 milliliters of ether, and now I'm going to add the remaining 16 milliliters of ether by washing in the starting material compound. So I'm going to wash the compound in by adding a little bit of ether to dilute the material. to withdraw the desired compound. And add it to the reaction flask. And I'm gonna rinse several times to transfer all the material over. Now this is an air sensitive reaction, modestly air sensitive, so for that reason we have all of these reaction apparatus under nitrogen gas, and you can see the bubbler indicating that the gas is flowing. Rotate the flask a little bit sideways to get every last drop. Okay, that should be good enough. So I've done several rinses. Add the compound. And now I'm going to wash out the needle by sucking some of the reaction mixture back up into the syringe and plunging it out. As much of that compound in there as possible. Turn on the stirring, and you can see that the uh, magnetic stir bar is spinning inside. This reaction needs to be conducted at negative 78 degrees. So I'm going to put my thermometer in. And I can see it's not cold enough, so I will add some dry ice. Yo, VIP. Okay, so now our reaction is chilled to negative 78, and it's time to add the methyl lithium. Now, methyl lithium is an alkyl lithium reagent, which means that it is very reactive, reacts violently with water and air, and for that reason, we need to use special precautions for transferring it into the flask. Uh, the first two precautions are simple. They have to do with uh, keeping the bottle from falling over, and so we've clamped the bottle in place, and we've also put a uh, lab jack underneath it to prevent uh, the bottle from slipping through even the clamp. So first I'm going to remove the cap. 
And as you can see, it comes sort of with a beer cap on top. And that is a uh, sure seal cap and it prevents air or water from entering the bottle. And into that cap, we are going to insert a needle of nitrogen. And now we can insert our syringe for transfer. And now I'm going to purge the syringe three times. So grab some of the nitrogen headspace to make sure that the needle and syringe are free of any air. We're going to purge it with nitrogen. It's important to hold the needle in place during the transfer because it's possible for needles to pop off and uh, it's one thing when a needle pops off and it's inconvenient, but when it's a safety hazard, um, it's definitely important to keep the needle in place. Okay, so now we have our syringe pump set up, and what the syringe pump is going to allow us to do is slowly push down the plunger of the syringe, and in doing so, we're going to add the methyl lithium solution dropwise. And we're going to place the syringe into the holder here. Again, be very careful not to allow the syringe needle to pop off. Okay, looks good. Now we select our speed, and I'm, I've done this before, and I think that the four is about right for this, and I'll turn it on. Now, in a few moments, you'll start to see liquid coming from the syringe. And what's happening is the plunger of the syringe is being very slowly pressed in. VIP. Let's kick it. Ice, ice, baby. Ice, ice, baby. All right, stop. Okay, so now what we're going to do is allow the syringe pump to add the contents of the syringe, all the methyl lithium, to the reaction mixture, and then we're going to let it stir and warm up to room temperature overnight. Tomorrow we're going to check back and see what we've got. All right, so we're back 24 hours later. Let's take a look. So what we've done here is I removed the syringe pump away from it and now the reaction is complete. It's been about 20 hours. And we're going to inject a small quantity of water. And remember I told you before uh, that uh, the alkyl lithium reagent reacts violently with water. Well, so for that reason I've chilled down the reaction a bit. And we're going to add the water to destroy the remaining lithium reagent. So I'll add this slowly. And if you look closely, you can see fissuring. Okay, so it's had a chance now to react with the alkyl lithium reagent, and I'm going to go ahead and take off the cap. Okay. Now, we just added some water to this reaction mixture, and we don't want that in the final product. So what I'm going to do is convert the water into a solid form, which will allow me to filter it away. So magnesium sulfate is a dehydrating agent, and it will soak up all the water to form the magnesium water complex. and then we'll be able to filter away the solvent. I'm adding the magnesium sulfate now, I'm going to add quite a bit. And we'll go ahead and let that stir for about 15 minutes uh, to make sure all the water is removed. All right, so 15 minutes have passed, and it's time now to filter away the solids, leaving behind the pure material, hopefully. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is pour some of the silica gel, which is ex extremely fine sand, into the filter frit. This is going to act as our filter. I'm going to turn on the water aspirator. It's going to create a vacuum. And now I'm going to pour the reaction mixture in.
I'm going to rinse with a little Pentan. And one more slight, slight little rinse with pen pen. Okay, so now we've got our product down there and pentane, so all that's left to do is remove the pentane. Okay. okay, so now we're ready to remove the pentane, and for that we'll use our good old friend the rotovapor. Come on over. So this is a, a old rotovap that we actually recently refitted with a new motor, uh, but it does get the job done. The way it works is you put the flask down here, flip it in place, and then turn on the vacuum. And now what's going to happen is the pressure inside the entire system is going to be reduced, and the pentane is going to distill onto this cold finger. Okay, so here's what we got out. All the solvent removed as far as I can tell. And now we can weigh it. So I weighed the empty flask. And it says 204.181. Okay, so we'll get the difference of those numbers. Point seven four six, and now if we see here, our theoretical yield was that's if everything went perfectly, we would get three point one zero four grams. So to find our percent yield, we'll divide what we actually got by what we expected to get, and you'll see that we got an eighty eight percent yield. So that's pretty good. Now we just have to check for purity. For those of you who are interested, here is an NMR spectra of the final product. Now, if you haven't taken organic chemistry, this probably doesn't mean much to you. Uh, then again, maybe not much of the video did. But using the spectra, I can tell you with almost absolute certainty that the compound is there, and it's very pure, greater than 97% purity from what it looks like.